All right, guys. Hey, Dr. Greg here. And on today's episode of The Daily Dose with Dr. Greg, I have in studio Janelle Yule with us. Janelle is a gut and hormone specialist. She is she has a really unique uh, endurance story. She is uh, a transformation coach, a yoga instructor, a little bit of everything, and in business with her husband. I think there's a special like award that goes with that. So yes. Janelle, good to have you here, my dear. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Yeah, right on. So the health and wellness journey usually has something that... We have, a, we have a past, we have a, an interest. Mm-hmm. Um, give us your story of how you got to where you are. Yeah, no, yes, absolutely. Every every um, journey has a start, right? Mm-hmm. So mine actually started with a pretty unhealthy relationship with food very early on in mm-hmm. my life. Um, You're not alone there. No. <laughs> and so kind of when I was growing up, it was like all of the processed food was coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, it mm-hmm. was the Hot Pockets and the Pizza Bites and the right. Gushers and like all of that yeah. was kind of coming onto the market. Yeah. And I fell into eating a lot of that. Okay. And, you know, so really the first place that fitness showed up for me was as a way to control my weight. Okay. So it kind of came out of not necessarily a positive place, but more of a negative place, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which Very I think so. is is pretty common. And then, you know, fast forward, and I was a three-sport athlete in high school, so then Very I really... Cool. What were really, your sports? Uh, volleyball, softball, and basketball. Very cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. So and did you grow up here in Minnesota? No, I actually grew up in Wisconsin. Very so cool. So I grew up on a farm. Um, yes. And it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not common that people that grow up on farms have the ability to be in three sports Mm -hmm. because they're like, Hey girl, you're part of the farm. So, well, and I was, I was the youngest. And so by the time I kind of got to that place, my parents weren't really full time farming as much. I did. Absolutely. You asked my brothers and yes, I absolutely (laughs) got away with it. Just older brothers? Yep. I have a brother who's 10 years older and a brother who's seven years older. Oh yeah. So you were the golden Mm -hmm. child. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) So, so they, they farmed a bunch, but by the time you rolled around, they were kind of slowing down in that world. Yeah. Yeah, Very exactly. Cool. So, um, yeah, so then, you know, I got really into sports and yeah. then that led more into fitness. And I actually went to college for dietetics. No so, way. I was, yeah, I was a dietetics major <laughs> and I got to organic chemistry and I was like, I'm out. <laughs> organic chem is real. And it's, yep. it's truly a weeder course. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember when I had to take organic chemistry and I was kind of that kid that was like, uh, teacher, can you explain to me where in my real life as a, a dietitian or a physician that mm-hmm. I'm going to use this and mm-hmm. kind of like crickets. Mm-hmm. So, yep. I mean, it's, it, it's, it doesn't even make sense, but it's yep. real, but yeah, it's definitely yep. one of those weeder courses. So, yeah. so <laughs> enter mm-hmm. organic chemistry yeah. and then what shift and then exit. <laughs> yeah. And so, and really I was at this point too, where I was like, I don't just want to focus on food. I mm-hmm. wanted to focus mm-hmm. on more the whole piece of things. Right. So I actually transferred into a program that was health promotion and wellness with a minor in psychology. And I actually health promotion and wellness. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So okay. I actually joke with people that I use psychology more than I use anything else, but let's be real. That's it's a lot real. of it's mindset and psychology, yeah. which I'm sure we'll get into a little bit today. Yeah. And so it was behavior change. It was stress management. It was nutrition. It was mm-hmm. exercise. It was kind of the whole cool. piece. Yeah. And so that was the path that, that I went down with school and then get out of school. And this Were you is Wisconsin in college as well. Yeah. You yeah. A Packers fan. Yeah. Yes, I am. Better girl. So I have a Badgers fan. I have a dog named Badger and I have a dog named Bucky. <laughs> Our daughter just signed with Wisconsin. Oh, to, awesome. To row, actually, She's going to love it. She's, She's going to love it. She's pretty stoked. So, yeah. so, yes, we have the W sweat, mm-hmm. sweatshirts in our house. So yeah. We could have worn red on this. We, we could have. It have been good. Okay, so, so Bucky and Badger are at the house. Yep, Bucky and Very Badger cool. at the house. I was actually a student sports nutritionist while I was at Madison. And I um, worked a little bit with the football team, a little bit with the um, rowing and the crew team. There you so, go. And then I actually ended up transferring out because okay. I was like out of the dietetics and, and moved on. Okay. So, so continue the journey. Yeah. So uh, I get out of school and it was really like this search for corporate wellness type jobs. Mm-hmm. But at that time when people, and I'll date myself a little bit, but people were getting into those jobs and they were staying in those jobs. Right. So they weren't super plentiful. And yeah. I always said, I will never become a personal trainer. Uh-oh. Never and say I became, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
And and I ended up moving into personal training, okay. which was phenomenal, and I learned a ton. Mm-hmm. But again, it was it, that for me, it's that missing piece. Like I want to look at the whole person. Yeah. I don't want to just have one aspect right. um, of them right. or have them for one hour three times a week yeah. and then not address anything else that's going on in their life. Correct. And enter. Justin, yep. some, someplace along yep, the path Yep, here. so enter Justin somewhere along the path. And my husband is a very high quick start, and he is an entrepreneur by heart, by spirit. Yeah. Um, and he was working for a company at the time, and he was just like, I, I can't do this anymore, yes. and I'm yeah. going to go off Time on my go. own. So 14 years ago, or it'll be 14 years in July, he started what is now our business. No. So if he's a high quick start, does that make you a high implementer? No, I am actually a high fact finder. Oh, so you're like the brakes to his mm-hmm. gas pedal. Yeah. <laughs> I am a quick start. Yes. And I'm like, that's just how things roll. And, mm-hmm. and quick starts better have implementers and yep. slower downers. Yeah. So that's a huge yeah. thing. So yeah, so our assistant ago, is a high follow through, which is what we need. <laughs> no doubt. So we're, so 14 years ago, had you got your personal training certification? And yep, so yep. Were, so I had actually been training um, for probably six years at that point, wow. okay. um, five, six years. And he actually started the business and I was still you know, holding down more of a consistent full-time yeah, I get job. It. I get it. Yeah. Uh, and then fast forward, he said, we can get a puppy and the puppy can go to work if you quit your job we're and in. come work with me. That was, so we're in. That was it. We're in. That's so wild. So Badger so came along history. almost 11 years ago. So Badger's not a puppy anymore. Badger is not a puppy anymore. Wild. Bucky is a puppy. Bucky's, Bucky's seven puppy. months old. And Badger's what kind of dog? He's a golden doodle. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Yeah. And now Bucky is... Badgering badger. Yes, he's a miniature golden doodle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so explain to our listeners then, because transformation, you guys call it transformation club, mm-hmm. transformation life, mm-hmm. is is different than your, hey, I'm going to go to the gym and hire a trainer. Yeah. Maybe explain that to yeah. our listeners a bit. Yeah, so the transformation club is a boutique fitness studio where we do uh, large group personal training. So we mm-hmm. individualize within a group setting yep. and everything is very well thought out and well programmed out. Right. Justin programs out everything a year in advance. So this isn't like the trainer is driving to, what you know, to the session in the morning yeah. thinking about about, hey, how I am I going to torture my clients? Exactly. Today. Yeah. How am I going to torture my clients today? Yeah. Yeah. And um, everything is around functional movement. Everything mm-hmm. is around optimizing metabolism. Uh, our clientele is mostly forty to, I would even say, all the way up to seventy. Yeah. We're kind of that sweet spot is probably about forty-five to sixty-five. You know, I happen to fall into that sweet spot. Much on the lower end of it, though. <laughs> uh, I work with people that are quite a bit older, and yeah. uh, I say that jokingly because we know. We both have Jen as our friend. Mm -hmm. Uh, The thing I say now to myself is I I want the things that I'm doing now when I'm 70 or 80 or 90, I want to say, wow, that was insightful. And we talked about, and I'm I'm all for endurance and climbing, Mm -hmm. but but Iron Man for me was not something that was a sustainable thing that I would go, oh, that was a good idea because my labs post racing season looked like, mm-hmm. wow, dude, you might look good. However, mm-hmm. you are a hot mess. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it's important because I also used to do a lot of CrossFit and I realized like strength training is good, but, mm-hmm. but is a 550 pound deadlift, you know, Correct. a good thing for my low back and my bone structure mm-hmm. and my discs, as mm-hmm. opposed to like, I really just want to build a bend down 25 years from now and grab my grandbaby and and exactly. and love on him so yeah. so it's that it's that understanding that it's not you're not training you know crossfit games athletes you're training mm-hmm. people that have a future in mind yeah. longevity and longevity right? longevity like is huge yeah. you know like i mean i want and i also i want quality of life mm-hmm. in my later years because i right. think that there's a lot of things like people are living a lot longer mm-hmm. but is it quality when they're having yeah. those years yeah. and experiencing so their life? People are familiar, Janelle, maybe with, I don't know, a CrossFit gym or mm-hmm. a Orange Fitness or, or these things. Um, how would an experience inside Transformation Club look different mm-hmm. if someone was like do, looking through the yeah. windows, if that's even possible? Mm-hmm. What would they observe? So we don't have any cardio equipment. It's all functional training with bands, with sliders, with boxes, with kettlebells, with dumbbells. Mm -hmm. Um, And really also we look at the whole person. So we have a registered dietitian on staff. So we do a lot of nutrition education because we Mm -hmm. know how important that is. 
Uh, we do yoga because we also know how important rest and recovery is and exactly. stress management. Right. We have a Norma Tech that is free for our members so they can Very use cool. that. Do you have the hips or just the legs? We have legs have? and hips. hips yeah. yeah, legs and we, hips. That we have those in our house and they mm-hmm. I was telling like they get used every single day. Mm-hmm. Those are clutch. So yeah. Yeah, they're it's a recovery, fantastic. right? Yeah, so we preach a lot of recovery mm-hmm. because the results happen outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. They don't actually, the stimulation right. and the stimulus happens in the gym, yep. but the results actually happen outside of the gym. And we also, we're huge into mindset. Yeah. We feel like that is a, is that's the missing piece because yeah. people often find themselves on the weight loss carousel because <sighs> they lose weight, but then they find it again and then they yeah. can lose it again because they never actually change their identity. Well, let's go there for a second, talking about mindset mm-hmm. and identity. Those are pretty big terms. Mm-hmm. So... The typical person that walks in, and someone might be listening to this going, oh, that sounds great and all, yet sometimes it can be actual work to work mm-hmm. on in through that. So mm-hmm. so when you talk about mindset, maybe define that, and then how do you understand where someone's at yeah. in, with their mindset? Yeah, so I think that a lot of times, um, how we, I mean, how you define mindset is your set of beliefs, mm-hmm. which then dictate your thoughts which then dictate your actions, which then dictate your results. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what happens is we have to look at what does someone believe about themselves and their Mm -hmm. capabilities? Mm -hmm. What does someone believe about health and fitness? What does someone believe about uh, exercise? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I've had people tell me, you know, well, I believe that eating healthy sucks like healthy food doesn't taste good yeah so then therefore i'll be resistant it's funny you say that so i grew up in a in a in a football basketball Mm -hmm. world and my roommate my sophomore year of college was a cross-country athlete Mm -hmm. and one morning he's like greg get out of bed we're going for a run (laughs) and i was like who in the hell would want to do that because as an as a as a football and basketball Mm -hmm. athlete if you were bad at practice three words Mm -hmm. on the line yeah so I was like, who would want to go for a run? Mm-hmm. So I love how you, so you talk about those previous components. Mm-hmm. So what would you say are the three most common, maybe deleterious mindset things that you see that are common that our listeners might be able to go like, oh yeah, that's kind of like me, maybe a little bit. Well, I think one is like, I'm not an athlete. So mm-hmm. therefore, like strength training or working out consistently isn't part of their identity. And I would say we are all athletes 100%. training for life. Right. Like you don't have to be training for an endurance event, whether it's an Ironman, you know, something like what I did. Like yeah. you don't have to be training for something. We're training for life. Right. And so I think that is a big one is, you know, people have had previous experiences. Maybe it was even like elementary gym class where something happened and in their brain, it's all of a sudden like mm-hmm. fitness is not for me. Mm-hmm. Working out is not for me. That's not, so. that's something that I don't do. Right. So, so that identification of who mm-hmm. I am or what I do from an athletic standpoint yeah. and then from a food standpoint, you're like, eating healthy is expensive yes. or it tastes like chuck mm-hmm. and cardboard and I, it's it's really tough to do mm-hmm. and I'm not a cook. It takes, and too much time. takes too much time. All those excuses come into exactly. play. So I think with one of the more, most important things I've seen is just for a person to actually hear themselves, mm-hmm. identify their thoughts around those mm-hmm. things. And then they say it and they're like, hmm. And you allow them to be like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, a big one is I don't have time. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to go grocery shopping. I don't have time to meal prep. Yeah. I don't have time to meditate. I don't right. have time to do these things. And that's their thought process. Yes. And it's but it's also where they are, right? Mm-hmm. So and and thank you for being honest. And I'm we're grateful that you're here because that right. took you an Absolutely. effort. Absolutely. But you're probably also not their their first stop on the fitness journey. Correct. And you guys are also like, and I don't want this, the Transformation Club, to be yet another one of those failed attempts. Correct. And that's, okay, so they they come to you with this litany of of things, and then how do you mull through that cloudiness of chaos? (laughs) That was a good way to put it. So, I mean, we do a lot of high touch, like accountability. So, and we mostly do that through 
texting with people, mm-hmm. right. checking up with people, yeah. asking people where they're at. You know, that is one of um, when when they sign on with a 12 month membership, they get access to our registered dietitian once a month. So mm-hmm. they have a coaching call with her okay. where she's yes, she's talking about food, but she's also talking about other things, right. which we know that because sometimes it's not about the food. Well, there's so many emotions tied into food. Uh, yeah. Like yeah. I, you, you, you had gushers and pizza pockets. Mm-hmm. I had a mom that was actually, and I love my mom, and mom, I love you if you're listening <laughs> to this. Uh, my mom was a home ec major, mm. and my mom also suffered from depression. Mm-hmm. So when mom felt good, from scratch. Yeah. And my mom didn't feel good, pizza pockets, yeah. Tortino's pizzas, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. So, and then with there, if there was an event, a party, a birthday, mm-hmm. what are we going to eat? Yes. Like it, so it like. Yes. Let's say that you and your, and your spouse, that Justin, were going to come to our house. The first thing I would think about is, what are we eating? Mm-hmm. And my wife would be like, and the house is a mess. Mm-hmm. So the thoughts that come with food and the yeah. relationship with food. And well, and that. I think uh, so many people, food is love. Mm. Food is how they were shown love right. as a child or how their parents continue to show them love. Mm. And so when they start to want to make changes or actually do start to make those changes around food, there's some unpacking there that they really need to look at. That is powerful right there because in, those emotions come with us. And, and they're not necessarily bad emotions, but for us to slow down with grace and no mm-hmm. judgment and go, where did I learn this? Exactly. You know? Where's and, the first time I experienced this? Yeah. Yeah, that's so wild. So so you get people to think mm-hmm. about those components. Mm-hmm. And then and then you, you don't go from from all these crazy thoughts to it being perfect. So you take them on a journey mm-hmm. through that. Yeah. And and it sounds like accountability. You you accountability check is a in. huge piece. Community yeah. is a huge piece. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and we do that in person and online. Okay. And so we have you know we have a, a really strong online um, community aspect. So people yeah. can you know people can when they're struggling they can post in there. Or if they're like, hey, I found this really great way to meal prep breakfast, and they take a picture of it. That's super inspiring yeah. when people in the community are doing that because we want to be a part of something. Exactly. Right? So you give people that yes. opportunity to be a part. Right. Right. And yeah. it's these are all other people that have the same type of goal that I have, the mm-hmm. goal of wanting to be the best version of myself, the goal right. of wanting to better myself, the goal of being healthy and fit, the goal of longevity. Yeah. And, you know, many of our members are grandparents. And That's so good. Yeah. And so, That's so good. you know, I had a I had a member this summer that I met with. Uh, she did hormone testing with me and she was saying to me her first grandchild was born I believe in April Mm -hmm. and she said she had an experience where the other grandmother was there and had the baby in the chair and had to hand the baby off to get up out of the chair where she said I'm on the floor with the baby and Mm -hmm. I can just get right up that's huge every single woman or man that I've ever talked to that is a grandma or a grandpa I think they have a vision of what they think it will look like or what they want it to look Mm -hmm. like and I think it's our job as, you know, motivators, healers, people that come alongside to, because the reality is it's kind of like, I want to be rich someday, but I'm never going to save a penny. Mm-hmm. That we have to bring them back into that fold and go, all right, it's time to like, and where where are you at to be able to do that? And and if you're the grandma that has to hand the baby off, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Yet, hopefully that that person, and couldn't that have been cool to say, well, the other grandma just got off mm-hmm. the floor and I want to be that grandma, right? Exactly. So that's, and then to have a place that they could mm-hmm. go and be inside of that. Um, let's let's stay in this world of the gym and talk about strength training. Mm-hmm. I actually interviewed a neurologist yesterday and he talked about how the circle mirrors and muscle mm-hmm. tissue is like the key to longevity. Muscle is the organ of longevity. Yeah. So yet when people think of muscle, they think of like, do I have to do like powerlifting or like, so how does that, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Or like, where does someone even start inside of that world to start to gain the benefits of that? Yeah. So, I mean, strength training is, has so many benefits. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's the muscle is the organ of longevity. Mm -hmm. I think that I hope somewhere in my lifetime, I see people going to regular conventional Western medicine and they're doing some kind of um, measurement as to how much muscle you have. Right. Because I think that that is super, super important. Well, the research is very clear. It's, it is. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's very clear. Yeah. And so, you know, I think you need to get started with two to three days a week. Mm-hmm. And and also getting started with the with the 
end in mind that especially as you age, mm-hmm. I won't necessarily put a number as if it's over 40, or, but right. as you age, you lose muscle. Right. So even if you can maintain the muscle mass you have as you age, that is winning. Because right. they think some people have this this notion that it has to be all about putting on muscle all the time, right. but maintenance is such a yeah, huge there's key. There's a point where you muscle waste. And, yes. and if, so if you're supposed to muscle waste and you stay maintaining, you're actually yeah. gaining yeah. that aspect. Exactly. That's so important because there's this concept, this misconception mm-hmm. that you have to become a barbell junkie and you have yeah. to have all the all that stuff. And But also in your guys' gym, like not every 45-year-old female mm-hmm. should be on the same workout program and yeah. lift the same amounts. Yeah. And that's where we, I mean, we use dumbbells, we use kettlebells, we use tools like that, but we also use bands because they're really joint friendly. Absolutely. And you get more of an even resistance, mm-hmm. you know, at, at a lot of different points in a lot of different exercises. Right. That's so good. I, uh, five years ago, so my dad is 75 now, dad, I love you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were at a family a family uh, event, and we were big water skiers. Mm-hmm. And my dad wanted to see if he could go water skiing, and he couldn't get himself up on two skis behind a boat. And he had it was kind of like you could tell he was a little bit defeated. And mm-hmm. on the vacation, I said, I said, you know, I'm just curious, Dad. You know, can you do a push up? Mm-hmm. And my dad could not do one push up. Yeah. And he was he was convicted. So I guess that's the first step yep. in this journey, yep. right? Is like, oh. Mm-hmm. And then he's, and I was like, well, we have to figure something out to, mm-hmm. to get into that world because you're right. I mean, there's this whole thing about what do you weigh? What do you weigh? What do you weigh? Mm. And so many people will sacrifice good quality muscle tissue to weigh us. Oh, get gosh. A number, don't, yes. right? don't get yep. you started, right? Yeah, I mean, don't get me started on the, the scale. <laughs> and the scale's power. And I mean, if you're listening to this, I'm, I'm guessing that at some point in time in your life, you've stepped on a scale mm-hmm. and it has said, it's given you something, and that something has taken your power, your joy, your bliss, <laughs> all of that. So maybe give me a, a little snippet about how you are, if you guys use measurements per se in that world. Yeah, so we have an in body, mm-hmm. uh, and we used it really consistently um, for years. And what we found was even though we're pointing out to people their lean body mass, because that is the most important Mm -hmm. number that we look at, Mm -hmm. and yes, then also taking into account body fat percentage over BMI, because that is going to give you a lot more information, people were still hung up on the the number. number. That's the number. Still hung up on the number. And so we have shifted a little bit more to more waist measurements Mm -hmm. because that can give us a really good indication of what's going on. Because if you're carrying a lot more visceral fat around your waist, that's obviously not great for your health. And you are on a on a path to dis-ease. Very much so. Very much so. So what I hear you saying is regardless of who you are, you need to have some resistance. Mm -hmm. And even for women, and this is a whole other conversation, but that resistance is bone density, that resistance is heart health, bone health, all of that. Well, and especially as women are in perimenopause Mm -hmm. and then moving into menopause and having that strength training aspect is so important for their metabolic health, their hormonal health, Uh, like all of those things. No doubt, no doubt. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but I do want to talk about the Everest Challenge. 29,000, 29 feet. You had a hot date with Snow Basin. I did. And it's just summer. so great to know that like, you've seen the mountain. Yeah, I, I can close my eyes and picture the gondola as it goes up. And uh, let's go back to you were made aware of this mm-hmm. and then you made a decision. Like, mm-hmm. so, walk, so let's go back to the, like, how, did, how were you made aware of that it even existed? Mm-hmm. And, and when did you have that, like, I'm in? So I was actually, Rachel Hollis um, did this event back in 2018, I believe. So I was listening to her podcast Mm -hmm. and she was talking about it. And I was like, wow, that is insane. Mm -hmm. And I had run marathons in my 20s. And so like endurance wasn't necessarily super new to me, but I gotten, I hadn't run for a decade. And I said I would never run again. Again, I I really need to to watch my words there. And so I just thought, gosh, that would be something cool. Like Mm -hmm. I am all about personal challenges for growth, learning, and expansion. That is like, that is my life basically. And so 
fast forward, you know, pandemic hit, like there were just a lot of challenges inside of that. Mm -hmm. And last year in 2022, I turned 40. So I thought, hey, what a perfect opportunity. And I started really following one of the founder, co-founders, Colin O'Brady, who was the first man to walk across Antarctica unsupported. He also um, has the world record for the Explorers Grand Slam. So he's been, he's climbed the seven tallest peaks, the fastest of anyone in the world. Like this, this man is incredible. Yeah. And so I'd really started following him. And so I had made the decision like, and it was almost this, I can't even describe it to you. It was like, I just knew it was something I had to do. It's a gut reaction. Yes, it was a gut reaction. So I'd said to my husband, hey, do you want to do this with me? And he was like, yeah, no, I'm out. Like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not even, not even in consideration. Yeah. Did and you expect him to say no, or were you? No, no, I actually kind of expected him to do it with me. Yeah. I kind of because he is very much on the mindset piece of it, yeah. but <laughs> this is where I go into things, and mm. I don't necessarily think them through. I just say yes first, like, and then do I'm you like, I'll what figure. You just said yes yeah. to. You're like, I'll get there at mile, you know, hour exactly. Yeah. And where he was like, he knew what was coming as far as like the training plan yeah. and all that. Yes. Where I'm just like, I'll do it. It takes, like, I don't care. I just, I need to do this. So I had brought it up. So registration is in October, and the event isn't until the following August. So nine, 11 months. Yeah. Yeah. And so I brought it up um, at the club, and our registered dietitian and head coach said, I'll do it with you. And I was like, you will? Both of those? No, she's the same person. She's the same person. Yeah, she's the same person. And she's 28. And I was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. So uh, she's, and and honestly, I was to the point where it didn't matter if someone was going to do it with me or not. I was going to do it anyway. So made the decision. But I will say when I hit that, like, submit registration button, I. A little puckering. Oh, I thought I was going to, like, I wanted to throw up. And we actually just had a member after we did it. We have a member that's doing it next year. And she texted me and she's like, what did I just do? And I was like, all of that is normal. Yeah, Yeah, you're you're good. good. So you chose the, the event in mm-hmm. Utah, mm-hmm. and it sounds like there's multiple events. Yeah, so next year they have five different mountains. Okay. The year that we did it, which was just last year, they had three mountains. And you chose Utah because? Uh, one, the time of year. Okay. So I wanted to do it more summer because uh, the other mountain is in Stratton, Vermont, and that's in October, and Ooh, weather could be, could be a little janky. dicey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's 17 times up. And for whatever reason, my brain just could wrap You're around like the number 13. 13. Yeah. yeah. What a great number. Yeah. So my so now it's you've you've hit you've hit the the submit button. Mm-hmm. Did Bucky and your other puppy get to do some training with you? Uh, well, so Bucky did not exist at that time. That's right. Because Badger yeah, was. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So Badger did yeah. do some training with me. That's so good. Uh, yeah. He. Well, we're he's my walking buddy anyway. So dogs are great for that. Yeah. So the the catch though, if I recall, because the base of basin is like sixty five hundred ish yep. to nine. Mm-hmm. Not even close to that here in Minnesota. Nope. Like, not even close. <laughs> yeah. Where did you find hills on your tour? <laughs> so I spent a lot of time at Highland. Yes. Climbing yeah, those. Yeah. Uh, but those are hills. Those are not mountains. There's two differences. There is a big yes. difference. Yeah. Uh, we spent time at Afton State mm-hmm. Park. Yep. Uh, we may or may not have kind of snuck into the ski park. Those I don't are think lot, you're yeah. supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Willow River State Park yeah. has some decent-ish kind of hills. Right. And then the last month I did go indoors and do incline treadmill and stair ma- and yeah. like step mill. Just get up stuff. Yeah, because mill. we, at that point, we needed elevation gain mm-hmm. and y- it takes a really long time, FYI, if you're wondering to get elevation gain, you know, 15% on the treadmill for quite some time, <sighs> hours. Tibial's anterior city of my world. <laughs> so, um, I've, I've done a half iron man in Colorado and kind of the rule of thumb was if you're going to go, if you live like it's way like, what is the elevation out here? Like I don't know. 700 or something yeah, like that. Not a lot. So I was told when I went to Denver, either you have to be here and compete within, I think it was 15 hours of your arrival or you have to be here for two days to mm-hmm. acclimate and then you yep. can rock and roll. What route did you yeah, take so, instead of that? Yeah. So we flew into Salt Lake on Tuesday Okay. And then drove up to Ogden on Thursday, and then we started Friday morning. So I had been okay. in Salt Lake for multiple days. Yeah, so you're, you definitely were acclimated yeah. inside of that. Yeah. Did they make you aware of the fuel available at the rest stops prior yes. to? So you kind of knew what to yes. train with. And, yes. And there's that, that is kind of the wild, wild west world, right? You know, it's, It is. And was it like goo power bar stuff, or what were, there, so, what were their fuels? Yeah, so it was... 
I don't even know the bars. <laughs> like I probably ate the same bar. Yeah. But the thing that I gravitated towards the most was orange slices. Interesting. Like they had apples and oranges and I think bananas. And mm-hmm. I was, it was like the, or- I just was like downing orange slices. Hmm. And then they had in the lodge like real meals. That's nice. But the thing that I, and, and again, I didn't expect this was, it was hard to eat. I but thought, not I thought, I, at all. yeah, I thought yeah. I was just gonna be like, yes, give me all the food. Hungry. This is gonna be amazing. Your GI system was like, all your blood is in your quads right now, yeah. sweetheart. So it's not <laughs> yeah. in your stomach. So. Yeah. So it was like force feeding yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've um, never. <laughs> did you never wear your whoop? So you wore your whoop mm-hmm. during it. Mm-hmm. Did you have a, a, a rough calculation of caloric burn? Um, you know, I didn't really look at the caloric burn. I looked at the strain, and yeah. the strain hit the max of that you. Possibly. Yeah. So but, for our listeners, a whoop is a is a is a device that yeah. she has on her wrist, and it it has really cool technology that mm-hmm. measures HRV and it, recovery. And mm-hmm. our daughter wears one of those. She's a yeah. elite level power lifter, and man, there's some really cool tools. It, they're really cool. So let's let, we, while we're talking about, mm-hmm. I mean, I have an aura ring and an yep. Apple Watch. You My husband has an aura ring. Um, let's talk about quantification for a second. Whether it's whoop or aura ring or mm-hmm. a, a Fitbit or mm-hmm. what is your opinion of those for let's say a member of your club? We actually highly recommend the whoop band for members. You know, so my husband has an aura ring, our head coach and dietitian has mm-hmm. an aura ring, but they don't like to wear well, these wristbands. Things are, these things are useless. Like this is no no barbells even. Yeah. It's beat up. Yeah. yeah. And I don't like to wear rings, so I like the band. So it was yeah. a preference for them, but actually my husband would tell you he prefers the Whoop software over the right. Aura Ring software yeah. for a lot of people. And I think it can, it can really, really tell you a lot because HRV is very much impacted by sleep, mm-hmm. by stress, right by what you eat, mm-hmm. how late you eat, mm-hmm. your blood sugar balance, all, all of all of these different the HRV things. HRV doesn't lie. No, it doesn't. Yeah. It really doesn't. And so I think it's really eye-opening for people. I was working with a woman uh, this fall who she was doing a lot of things mm-hmm. and she was getting really great results other than her body wasn't releasing weight. Mm-hmm. And so she got a whoop band and her mm-hmm. recovery in HRV was in the Tank. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, your body isn't going to release that weight if it doesn't feel safe. Mm-hmm. And so what's going on from the stress response? Right. And so alcohol is a big one what for a lot her, of people. So just really quick. So for yeah. our listeners, HRV is heart rate variability. Yes. And so if my watch says that my heart rate is 60, that's an mm-hmm. average of 60 beats a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, the higher the HRV, the the more variance in between exactly. the beats. So I think of like, if your body's like good and it's like a free spirit, yes. it might be like 1.2, 0.69, 1.7. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not, not that big, but, but the higher variance, the more recovered mm-hmm. you are. Yes. And the more stressed your system is, the more militant, the more yes. metronomic that beat becomes right. because your body's like, all right, free spirit, mm-hmm. enough floating around, time to bring it in. And so what we find then is if you're not recovered, that, that number gets low. Yeah. So high HRV is good. Right. And the, it's the balance of your nervous system. Okay. And your nervous system is so important. It is. I, I think it controls most things. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so for her, as an example, mm-hmm. what were those like aha moments when she was able to tie her world to mm-hmm. that number? Uh, so sleep was a big one. Uh, and she wasn't She wasn't really, she didn't have a great bedtime routine. She didn't have, you know, a great relationship with light and technology at mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Alcohol was a big one. Alcohol is a killer of HRV. It is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge one. Eating too close to bedtime mm-hmm. is a big one. Right. And just also, I think a lot of times people can almost not necessarily get addicted to stress, but they live in this sympathetic state all all the time, so Mm -hmm. it's all they know. So Mm -hmm. she didn't even realize that her body was stuck in this sympathetic state. And so then giving her and talking to her about tools to move her into that parasympathetic state was huge. And for her, was the documentation on a third-party device the thing that kind of Mm -hmm. went her and said, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And then what were the top, if you recall, what were the top three things that were like, girl, you got to do this or stop doing this? That's going to have the biggest impact. What were those for Yeah, it was um, alcohol. It was a huge one. It was uh, prioritizing sleep and then um, some kind of activity to put her body in parasympathetic, whether that was stretching, whether that was meditation, Mm -hmm. like something to calm her nervous system. Yeah, that you have to, you can't expect, you know, if you think of like driving a a five speed, you can't 
you, the clutch is there for a reason. You have mm -hmm. to be able to slow down. You can't have the gas pedal down and expect your body to lose weight, for yeah. example, or yeah. those types of things. Well, that is so good. So you talked about also um, hormone testing a woman before. Mm -hmm. So you also have a, a savviness inside of mm -hmm. looking at some biochemistry yep. inside of that. So what were some of the symptoms that that woman had that made you say, hey, we should probably look at some of the data? So um, she was dealing with a lot of acid reflux, she, like a mm. lot of GI stuff. Okay. Um, skin rashes, which people don't necessarily equate to GI, but it's very tied <laughs> to your right. gut health. Right. So it was a lot of gut stuff, um, fatigue, insomnia, like all mm -hmm. those types of things. And had she been a member of your club for a while? No, she was actually brand new um, to our community, and yeah. she really jumped right in and did a three-month um, intensive one-on-one -on -one with me healing her gut. Very cool. So what type of testing did you do? Um, so with my... Hormone testing, I use the Dutch test, which mm -hmm. is a dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. Right. And I love that one because you're getting a diurnal rhythm of cortisol. So mm -hmm. what diurnal rhythm means is that you're getting cortisol multiple times throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So you can see where are your peaks, where are your valleys, what's happening right. there. Right. But then the other huge thing is you can see mm -hmm. how someone's metabolizing hormones, which exactly. is yeah, which is almost more important than the actual raw value of some hormones. Well, if you are... Estrogen's good. Yep. Unless it's going down the ugly pathway. <laughs> exactly. And then it's exactly. so so what we mean to that is that Dutch test mm -hmm. will say estrogen has a good pathway, mm -hmm. a bad pathway, and an ugly pathway. Yes. And if it's going down that ugly pathway, then that then that metabolism of estrogen mm -hmm. is dangerous, right? Yeah. And people think of like estrogen dominant disease as like breast cancer and uterine exactly. cancer. So that test is really important for mm -hmm. us to look at that component as well. Yeah. And yeah. then so what would you expect to see on a test mm -hmm. like that? And then how would you take those results and formulate a game plan? Yeah. So sometimes, and, and it's interesting because sometimes you see really high cortisol or sometimes you see really low cortisol mm -hmm. or sometimes you see an inverse relationship in cortisol. So right. the Dutch test also can give you a lot of clues into what's happening in the thyroid, mm -hmm. but then also what's happening in the gut. True. So, you know, I believe that there is a thyroid adrenal gut access and you have to address all of those mm -hmm. with the gut being the root of it. So right. oftentimes when I'm, you know, people come to me because they want hormone tests and they mm -hmm. want the magic supplement that's going to help fix their hormones. There is no magic supplement, <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, I was like, you can't supplement your way out of a crappy lifestyle. Right. And, and yeah. so then it's, it's showing them a lot of people need to see on paper, right. here's what's happening. And this is mm -hmm. also equating to the symptoms and how yes. you are experiencing your daily life, right. whether right. that's fatigue, whether that is, you know, weight loss resistance, mm -hmm. whether that is um, things in their thyroid that they maybe already have identified, right. but medication isn't exactly doing anything for them. That's right. typically my experience when people are coming to me yeah. or whether it's autoimmune conditions, which yeah. is a huge one that I work with. It is a huge one. So talk to me more about kind of your thought around autoimmunity and what mm -hmm. you think the body's doing and what you found success with. Yeah. So, well, I have a lot of thoughts. on that. <laughs> so I also believe that the body is always working for us. Mm -hmm. And so there is something that has happened mm -hmm. that the body feels as though it needs to basically go haywire right. and go after different tissues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting with the gut and when the gut pulls apart and we have leaky gut mm -hmm. going on, which mm -hmm. most people do, it's, common. it's very common. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be even more common when somebody has had a history of antibiotic use, which Pretty is common. really common. You know, I look back at my own childhood and I think I was probably on antibiotics at least once a year. It is super common. Well, and it's, you know, you have a screaming kid, mm -hmm. you go to the doctor yeah. and you're like this and right. it means give me a drug. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes antibiotics are, are very warranted. You know, There's there was, place. yes, at, mm -hmm. at one point in my life, they, they saved my life when I had um, a leaky appendix that had to come out. And prime example. Exactly. I, you know, I would not be here. So I'm right. grateful for that. And yet there isn't any education or no one, no one is learning what you need to do on the back end of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the other thing. Like, for example, like with, if you're a parent listening to this, mm -hmm. ear infections, <laughs> only 5% of the time is it actually exactly. a bacterial infection. Mm -hmm. It's otitis media. It's just simply mm -hmm. pressure behind the eardrum. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is then those, those guts just take hits upon hits. Exactly. And then there's, then there's not only the, the gut 
adrenal thyroid axis, there's this huge gut brain component that yes. comes into play. And then we're now we've got it all tied together mm-hmm. and it's just crazy sauce. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the immune system is on overdrive because it's it's getting hit from all these different places. Right. And then you start to throw food that is inflammatory into that and the right. standard American diet and glyphosate that is sprayed on everything. And you just like round and round we go. I'm actually reading a book right now called... Um, Toxic Legacy, written by Stephanie oh. Seneff, who's one of the lead MIT researchers on it. It's actually quite, quite a depressing book to read. I can imagine. And, and the reality is that glyphosate and the shikimate pathway, which is fun to say, but it's it's crazy what mm-hmm. it does in our body. And we mm-hmm. have to start voting with our checkbooks mm-hmm. at the grocery store. Yeah, is 100%. What that, is what that comes down to play there. So, yeah. Okay, so what were some of the actionable items then with that woman, mm-hmm. for example, yep. based upon the Dutch results? That yeah, so um, changing her diet, removing all inflammatory foods, mm-hmm. uh, specific supplementation, but then I took her through um, a three-week pathogen purge where we went at um, overgrowth of bacteria in the, in right. the small intestine. Yep. So SIBO is something that I deal with a ton because mm-hmm. I find that it is underneath a lot of things. And then with that, there's also probably there always is other pathogens. Yeah. So um, whether that's parasites, whether that's dormant viruses, right. et cetera. Right. Uh, and so using targeted lifestyle practices mm-hmm. and um, getting their drainage pathways open, that's Super another important. huge thing, and supporting the liver. Right. The so liver is such a huge general I tell of the body. people that the liver is the most overworked, underpaid organ in the body. It's a great way to put it. So your top three... Um, lifestyle things that you would tell someone, what would those what would be your top three? Uh, castor oil packs is probably okay. top. So explain that to our listeners, what a castor yeah, oil so pack is. It's basically, you can use an old flannel or you can get a flannel. I order one from a company called Queen of Thrones. So mm-hmm. you just drizzle castor oil on, you put it flat against your skin, right on your liver. You can sleep with it on. And castor oil is the only oil that will penetrate the dermis of the skin that can help to support um, the liver, create more glutathione, which is an, a master antioxidant, mm-hmm. can help with bloating, gas, constipation, all kinds of things. I kind of cool. I kind of say it's like my magic. Thing. Castor oil packs, number yeah, one. Yeah, castor oil packs would be, um, and food, yeah. you know, cruciferous vegetables, making sure mm-hmm. that you are um, getting in your broccoli, your kale, your arugula, your cauliflower, right. mostly cooking those because a lot of times people have a hard time digesting right. those, so right. breaking those down, so making sure that you're, that you're cooking those, that's mm-hmm. a huge one. Um, and then I'm also a huge fan of teas. I okay. love using teas because okay. it's a really great way to get in plant compounds. Right. So, you know, different things like milk thistle is super supportive for mm-hmm. um, for the liver. So I will give specific teas to help with decreasing inflammation, supporting right. digestion. That's so good. Well, we'll take a little pause here for a commercial break and we'll jump back in. This podcast is sponsored by Therisage, affordable at-home saunas and therapy made simple. Therisage is your source for infrared healing and detox on the go. Head to therisage.com and use code Dr. Greg Health for 10% off your entire order. All right, guys, we're back. So I think, you know, Janelle, and talking with you, the secret sauce, I mean, because there's lots of people that run labs and there's mm-hmm. lots of places that lift weights, though the mindset is really like, dare I call it, it's like your secret sauce. Mm-hmm. And it's also not the easiest thing. I mean, if, if, if mindset was easy and everyone could get it figured out, mm-hmm. everyone would do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, and not just, you know, I, I, as, as a physician that works with patients, you know, even sometimes I'm like, I better have perfect health, you know? So sometimes I even battle inside of that. So when you like, like, let's just go a little back and forth here and talk about like, how do you, cause our listeners might be like, Oh, this sounds great. And I, I want this mm-hmm. yet. They're like, Oh, Where's she gonna go? You know, so maybe maybe let's let's just do a little bit of back and forth, and I'll be as real as, as appropriate for a, for a uh, things. But let's just talk about like what are some of the questions that you would ask somebody, and kind of where does that lead? So oftentimes I want to get to what is moving them into what I would consider a primal or a suffering state. So what is moving them into stress? Okay. What is moving them into overwhelm? What is moving them into frustration? What are the examples of the what's? So oftentimes it is work. 
you yeah. know, too much going on at work or right. feeling like they can never get it all done at work, feeling like okay. there's too much to do. Sometimes it is different relationships. So maybe even relationships with a lot of the people that I work with, their kids are kind of in this young adult moving into adult transition, which yeah, I'm assuming you can, I do. Yes. <laughs> you can relate to that mm-hmm. a little bit. And so there's some challenges that can come around come around that. And so um, they may be moving into a primal state around the frustration of, you know, their so-called adult child and what's happening there. Um, Sometimes it can be you know, intimate relationships, more of their, their marriage, their spouse, their partner. I mean, we have struggle with things that are closest <laughs> to us sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I heard you say frustration. Mm-hmm. I heard you say overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Though I think the, the gist of it, though, is what what takes us into that path. Yes. Right? So yes. let's say that someone's identified. Mm-hmm. It's my work. Mm-hmm. And I am the breadwinner of the family. Mm-hmm. And I have to provide so like how do you then like what so in that example for that person mm-hmm. we've identified it mm-hmm. then how, and they can't quit per se or they can't get out okay. of it so then what's the next step so it's looking at well what is your perception so for example i have a woman that i'm working with right now and she's in a workplace environment where she could literally work 24 hours a day 7 days a week and not get it all done mm-hmm. and so helping her to see that even if you did this, it's still not going to get all done. Right. So then for her to go, I'm not going to work on the weekends was like a huge transformation. Wow. Big for step her, for her. Yeah. For her to like take time for herself to go do things that she enjoys, to mm-hmm. set herself up for success right. for the week ahead, to really fill her own cup so instead good. of pouring out to everything That's else. So good. You know, Janelle, I have some, I have some pretty extensive neurology training and there's actually a part of our brain that's designed to keep us safe. But in yes. that woman's situation, she is conditioned to say, I'll never get the work done. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, and I'm so grateful that you walked with her because there's this thing that says, what if I took my foot off the gas pedal? Mm-hmm. And then it's crazy how our brains mm-hmm. can go down that country road mm-hmm. 100 miles. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, Tim Ferriss has a part in one of his books where he talks about, it's called a fear-setting exercise. And, mm. he, would, and he would say mm-hmm. something like, okay, well, what's the worst thing that could happen exactly. if you didn't work Saturday and Sunday? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh my gosh, like my department would go under and the mm-hmm. company would go bankrupt and, my, and I'd get fired. And then and that you'd let a person sit in that and then you'd say, and what's the chances Exactly. Of that happening. And they're like, not really that good. Exactly. Okay, so then if you took Saturday and Sunday for yourself, what could happen inside of your body? Exactly. Well, I would enjoy my family and mm-hmm. I would, you know, I'd sleep in or I'd, I'd, I'd go for a walk or I'd meet up with some friends. Exactly. And, and, and if you took Saturday and Sunday off, what's the chance of those things happening? Well, they'd happen. Huh. And then this part of your brain called your amygdala yes. goes, yeah, the fear center calms down. It's so important for us to, it is. to just slow down. Well, it's also important for somebody to ask you the question, is that actually true? Because so many people are operating from truths that are not actually their own, that are not actually true because it's actually a story that they're telling themselves. Mm-hmm. Story There's a difference between, I always, I always differentiate for people the difference between fact and story. Mm-hmm. What are the facts in the situation? <laughs> no, it sounds like I'm having a conversation with my kids. I don't want the story. <laughs> just give me the facts. Exactly. exactly. And it's interesting how we've created a story in many 100%. cases. And it's not uncommon. And here's the thing. Like if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh. This is what our brains do. It's what our brains do. It's what our brains are designed to do. But we don't have, most people don't have the awareness mm-hmm. that they can actually direct their thoughts. They mm-hmm. believe that just because they have a thought, it's true. Well, you mean your thoughts sometimes lie to you? <laughs> I love it. That's revolutionary. That huh? is revolutionary. Your thoughts can lie to you. Well, Janelle, I tell you what, um, we try to keep our, our, our podcast at about this length. And this has been fun. You and yeah. I, again, um, Wisconsin fans now, <laughs> yes. mutual. Uh, yeah, we've got the red stuff and we're excited for Adrian out there. I'm excited for you. Madison is, it's so fun. Yeah, it's good. Well, that's where I did my Ironman actually. Is it? Oh so, yeah. So I ran through the frat houses yeah. on that day and it was really the drunk frat boys that mm. kept me going. I can see, I can, <laughs> they're fun. They were they're a fun. good time. So I tell you what, um, thank you for being with yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. This, this has been amazing. Conversation. So there we have it.